Hi, and welcome back to Improve Your Piano Skills. It is almost Halloween, and so this episode we are focusing on spooky music. Specifically, spooky music inspired by Bach's Toccata in D minor. And if you don't recognize the title of that piece, I'm almost certain that you would recognize the way that it sounds. <laughs> going to do is we're going to take some of the elements that Bach used for making his piece which he almost certainly improvised that a whole bunch of times before anyone wrote it down that was part of their tradition and so we're going to honor that tradition and I'm going to give you some building blocks and some patterns to play um, which will improve your skills and also give you some tools for improvising your own spooky music. All right I've got a list of some of the ideas that we'll be using here. Um, the first one is the most basic and the most obvious. You can turn just about anything into spooky music if you add an organ sound. Um, and if you don't have an organ sound, if you're just playing on acoustic piano, that's fine. But if you do happen to have one... It's already spooky just by adding the pipe organ sound. Um, then the next thing we're going to look at is our chords. The one chord, the four chord, and the five seven chord in the key of D minor. And if you haven't studied any of those, if those terms are not familiar to you, don't worry about it. We're going to start at the very beginning. And um, I'll show you the hand shape that we've got here, our home base hand shape. And for those of you that know a D minor chord, there's the full chord. But if all you've studied is the outside, you can start with that. Um, and again, you can play, you can build up. Very impressive if you play them all at once, or you can do a little arpeggios. And then we've got our four chord, which for beginners would be known as the up shape, where you just move your finger up, and then that middle note is the G. Nice full chord, back to the home, which is the one. And then the five chord, which is a down shape starting at the beginning and this is a A major chord and if you want to make it into an A7 a 5 7 just add that G there I'm stopping the plane because it's a little overpowering the organ sound so I don't really want to talk over it so let's just try going back and forth between those chords I'll do blocky style maybe a little bit of patterns take these same chords. I've got the D. Nice impressive arpeggio. Let's try the G. This time I put in the G in home base, which is known as root position also, and then the A. <laughs> All right, so there's our basic chords of one, the four, and the five, seven. We'll come back to those in a minute. Um, so chords are one component of what's going on, but we've also got a D minor scale. And I have written that out on the bottom here. And if you haven't played a D minor scale before, we've got all white notes. So you get to the B flat, and then we're going to use a C sharp. So the B flat looks like it got scuffed on the other side of my piano. B flat and C sharp. And if you're using your right hand, you'll play the first three notes, and you'll tuck your thumb under. Those of you who studied natural minor first, you know that we use the C instead of the C sharp, but I'm going to stick to harmonic minor for today. All right, and then for the left hand, so you will take the first five fingers. When you get to your thumb, you have three left, so you'll use your third finger. All right, let's get that back out of the way. So one of the things, just by playing in unison, so I'm 
using my notes of the D minor scale. I'm not... You can go straight up and down, but music usually does more different directions than that. So I would encourage you to practice it that way. So I'm not playing a straight two octaves up and down, but I am using that crossover. So it's almost like I'm thinking this is the center of my scale. And depending on what direction I go, I'd either use the pinky or the thumb. If I'm going down, I'll use the thumb here. If I'm going up, I'll use the pinky. So that's one thing we can do is play both hands playing the exact same thing. The other thing you can do is do a chromatic scale. On top of a chord, that sounds even cooler. And if you haven't studied the chromatic scale, um, chromatic scale just means you're using every single key, all half steps. The general idea is your third finger will always be on a black note. Your thumb goes on the white note. Unless there are two black notes, then you have to make sure you have your second finger in the right place. So if I'm going down, my second finger would come first so that I'm walking up. One, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, two, three. And then the left hand is the opposite. One, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, two, two. And so that is a good one to practice too. So we already might have enough things for you to practice. Um, I encourage you, if some of these are too difficult, just ignore them. Pick the ones that are the right level for you to do. Um, and then the other thing you can do is um, repeated patterns that go kind of quickly. So we're still using the notes from the D minor scale. And then if you can get your fingers to do that together. ideas there. So pick just a couple of those, not too many. Um, then the other thing you can do is if you make a nice deep, maybe even way down there, a melody note, and pick perhaps a chord shape. And what I'm going to do is repeat this kind of quickly. I'm just doing a D minor chord. Switching to G minor. So repeated patterns on the right hand, long bass notes on the left hand. And then let's go back to our chord ideas. So we had our basic primary chords, one, four, and five, seven. Um, and then there's different ways you could play these to make them sound more interesting. If you are ready, you could spread these out so that you've got an octave in each hand. And I have actually an inversion in this hand. Um, if you weren't comfortable with that, you could do an octave on root position there. So then we're going to make a pattern. That was the D minor. And then let's go up a step and let's try. And I'm not even keeping time. I'm kind of imagining I'm a guitar or a harp. Like strum up, strum down. And you can catch it with your pedal or not, depending on what sound you're aiming for. Um, let's try an F. You could also get a little bit more. So on that, I was trying to keep a very steady beat. Um, let's see if we, oh, and then the, the diminished chords. We can't skip those because they are very cool. Perhaps the spookiest of all. So I'm going to show you how to make this diminished chord here. 
you start with a C sharp. The nice thing is it just repeats. So there's really only four separate notes and then you start over again. So you could practice it here. You could also practice it here. And that would be a good exercise. And then go up to the next inversion. Or you can make it nice in time. Or practice them as block chords. Next one up. Now you could play this inversion. Um, I was taking this C sharp diminished and I was inverting it. So it's still a C sharp diminished all the way up and down. Or you could go up a half step. Oops. <laughs> Someone needs to practice their diminished chords. Maybe that'll be my project. So that sounds even building more tension like in the old movies when they would tie the girl to the railroad tracks. So uh, those are some ideas. What I would encourage you to do is pick a few um, to practice to get in your fingers and then play around with making just a little arrangement. So we're going to start off with the D minor scale. And then octaves. D minor, G minor. repeated pattern here. Those are just a couple of ideas of what you could do with it. Um, I would love to hear from you. If you play around with this, show me what you've got. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hope it gives you a few things to practice and to make your own spooky music. Have fun with it and I will see you at the next lesson.